Hello everyone. Today, we will introduce the basic usage of the ELF AI ODK210 robot controller. First, let's talk about its connection method. Insert the Type-C cable into the controller's port. Then, we open the Wecode programming software. Select the controller. Then select the port here. Two ports will appear here. We choose COM11. It now shows that the connection is successful. We open code mode. Next, we can flash the firmware. Generally, we use the basic firmware by default. Before flashing the firmware, we need to clear the existing content. We use Erase to clear it. Cleared successfully. Now, we flash the basic firmware. After the firmware flashing is complete, some information will be displayed here. We open the content of Lesson 3. Then we drag the program from the accompanying course materials. Then we upload this program. After uploading the program, we can see the controller's screen. It can now display the captured images. Currently, the screen display is upside down. We can adjust the settings here. Then re-upload the program. Okay, now we see the screen correctly oriented. In actual use, you can choose whether to invert the screen or not. There are other related functions that you can set yourself. In this segment of program, a button is set. When the button is pressed, it will save a photo. Now, let's try pressing the button on the controller. Press it. Now, it has saved a photo. The saved photo can be viewed through a second program. This program displays the photo you just took. We can open code mode. Upload it. At this time, we can see. The controller screen displays the photo you just took. Now, no matter how the camera moves, the screen still displays the photo taken earlier. It will no longer show the live camera feed. Apart from taking photos and displaying them, there are also recording and playback functions here. You can test them yourself. Click the corresponding option. Let's open code mode again. Upload our program. This will complete the operation. Next, let's learn about the basic usage of color recognition. We disconnect the Wecode software's connection. Open the Maxipy we installed earlier. After copying the code here, paste it here. Overwrite the previous program. Then we establish the connection here. After connecting, we click the green button at the bottom left to run. After running, the top right corner of the software will display the camera's captured image. At this time, we take out a colored block. Then we aim the camera at the block. OK. Now we see the block in the frame. This is a pink block. We will select the target area of this pink block. This is the target color we need to recognize. After selecting, in the lab visual space here, you can see the corresponding maximum and minimum values. To obtain more accurate lab values, we can find machine vision here. Then find the threshold editor. After opening the threshold editor, we can set the required maximum and minimum values here. For example, the maximum L value is 70 and the minimum is 61. We move the slider here. 70. 61. Then the maximum A value is 57, and the minimum is 26. 57. 26. The maximum B value is 25, and the minimum is 9. Now the pink color in this block area is fully displayed. This is the target color we need. The pink in this area. Of course, if you want it to recognize less strictly, to make it more flexible, we can widen the threshold slightly. This way, in different environments with slight interference, it can still recognize the color block. Instead of having to recognize it so precisely, we can loosen the threshold a bit. Even the dimmer pink parts above the block can be recognized. These are the lab threshold parameters we need. Fill these parameters back into our color recognition program. The color recognition program is in lesson 6 of our accompanying materials. We drag in the code from lesson 6. Here in the program, we need to input the lab value parameters. 
Now we input the corresponding parameters. OK, the lab value parameters for the target color are now filled. Go back to Maxipi and stop. Then disconnect here. After disconnecting, return to the Wecode software. Select the controller and connect to the port. Upload the program. Now let's check the controller's display screen. When the camera captures this pink block, it will frame the pink block on the display screen. When the pink block is not present, the frame disappears. The main control will frame the color block when it recognizes it. OK, that's all for the basic usage of color recognition. Next, let's discuss object recognition. First, we remove the memory card from the controller and insert it into the card reader. Then connect it to our computer. Locate the inserted memory card on the computer. Copy the model files from the accompanying course materials, specifically the 20 class doc model, and place them into the memory card. After save them correctly, reinsert the memory card back into the controller. We open lesson 4 of the accompanying course materials. Drag the program from within into the software. This is a program that can recognize 20 categories of objects. The objects can be recognized are these specific items. Let's upload the program to see how it works. Select the port. Note, the model's location is in the SD card. Make sure not to get the path wrong. OK, the program has been successfully uploaded. Let's find some object images and have it recognize them to see how it performs. You can see the word airplane displayed in the top left corner of the controller's screen. And below it, there is a confidence display. Change to another picture. The top left corner of the screen still shows airplane. Try changing to another object. Now the screen displays the word bicycle. Change to another picture. The top left corner of the screen still shows bicycle. Try changing to a bird. Now the screen displays the word bird. Object recognition is achieved by loading a model. It can recognize the objects recorded in the corresponding model. Earlier, when we were using object recognition, we needed to preload the model file. This model file only includes 20 categories of objects. If you want it to recognize more other objects, you need to train the model yourself and perform machine learning. Then generate the corresponding key model file. If you are learning a very large number and variety of objects, the model file becomes very large. This may lead to insufficient memory. At this time, you can use the advanced firmware. It is 1,282 kilobytes in size. This firmware is slightly smaller than the basic firmware. When using the advanced firmware, we can train larger model files and then use them. The advanced firmware removes some content such as color recognition and voice recognition. The basic firmware includes all recognizable functions. The advanced firmware is only suitable for object recognition using model files. Using those models you trained yourself, such recognition. That's all, thank you for watching.